Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs. Uh, today with some examples of fake Chinese semiconductors that I've encountered in the last 12 months. Well, it all started with fake germanium diodes or diodes that were designed as germanium as these two examples here and a uh, 1N60P and 1N34A. They both are in fact originally germanium diodes, but if you uh, search on eBay or AliExpress or whatever, you will usually find these orange colored diodes. And I've made a separate video about them, how to discern Schottky diodes from real germanium diodes. Here I've made a macro photo and on top you see one of the fake germanium diodes, which are in fact Schottky. And you can always recognize them that they have these two big orange blocks inside them, while uh, in the middle you see two genuine germanium diodes in a clear glass case, um, where if you look closely you can even see the bond wire attached to the germanium crystal. And the lower black one is a somewhat older germanium diode from the times when they still painted the glass case uh, black, perhaps to protect them from uh, light because germanium diodes are of course light sensitive. Now the characteristic curve of Schottky and germanium diodes are nearly the same and you can easily or you can only discern them by measuring the reverse current and there they differ substantially. The difference is many decades. Uh, germanium diodes usually have a reverse current in the range of microamps, while Schottky diodes uh, usually are in the nanoamps uh, region. And uh, I will link in the video that I made just how to discern them. And um, this difference may be unimportant to your application, but uh, for example, for crystal radio enthusiasts, they, uh, for whatever reason, they prefer genuine germanium diodes. And uh, if you sell them Schottky diodes, they are not very happy about it. So there is in fact a reason that in some very exotic applications, uh, germanium is somewhat better than a Schottky diode. But anyway, um, when a diode is advertised as germanium, it should also be germanium. So the next fake chip I encountered was the famous XR2206 function generator chip, which is uh, sold in these little, which is sold today in these little kits. And uh, I recognized that the chip only works up to 12 volt and when closely inspected it I found out this was not an original XR uh, chip but it was a fake Chinese counterfeit and uh, it works basically the same um, but it only goes to 12 volt supply voltage and above that the oscillation starts to go havoc. Uh, so this is also a quite a popular video on my channel and I will link down below in the video description I will link in um, where you find how I found out about this chip and how to improve substantially this little kit. You can already see uh, that it's heavily modified uh, by me to work just as I want it to work. Now the next thing I encountered um, was a batch of BF250 D6A or was it 245A? Anyway, these are N-channel JFETs and they are quite popular because they have a very low turn on or gate threshold voltage. And so they can be operated especially uh, with uh, better op battery operated uh, circuits. And there is an A, B and C version but especially the A version is not produced anymore. The A version is just what most uh, people who need this uh, FET are searching for because it has a turn on voltage of around two or three volts. So it can be used with a 4.5 volts battery voltage. 
And now I, I bought a batch of these from I think AliExpress and, and I uh, inserted them in the circuit and the circuit didn't work and I thought oh, yeah, what's that? And I unsoldered the, the, the transistor and checked it with our little component tester. So let's insert it in our component tester with a modified firmware which you can also buy in our shop. And see what we get as a test result. And we get bipolar junction transistor NPN. So instead of a JFET, an N channel JFET, we, we get a bipolar transistor. So clearly a fake. And, and let's compare this with the one from my personal stock of hopefully genuine BF245A and see what our component tester tells us about this one. And N channel JFET. Uh, here you can see the gate voltage here was only 0.86 volt, and there we already have 1.2 milliamps. So that's why this A version is really sought after uh, because you can use it at very low DC voltages, but it, it isn't um, manufactured anymore in the A version. You still get a lot of the B and C versions, uh, but the A version just is only produced in SMD form factor, but not in TO92 through hole package. So, and I already, I also took a uh, macro photo of the two and you can clearly see the difference. The left one is the genuine one. You can see that uh, the case is much more, let's call it polished. And also the printing, although the, the picture is not very sharp, but this is a genuine Fairchild transistor. And you can see the printing is much cleaner, but you can only see this when you compare them under a microscope that the right one here is the fake transistor. Strange that they even, they fake everything really, or they relabel it or re reprint false components. They even uh, didn't take care just to find a, a similar JFET. They just took a bipolar transistor. So although I got my money back when, when I told them about that, uh, I'm not very happy with this kind of politics uh, of faking ICs. So the next one I can uh, show you only a photo with, my, with a macro lens. It's a little radio chip called CD2003GB and even this one was faked. A customer from us uh, wrote to me that the circuit he built with this IC didn't work and I told him to send him the circuit and I checked it and really uh, there was something clearly wrong with the IC and I rechecked it with uh, one from an older delivery and that one worked and uh, you cannot see anything here from the printing on the IC. It looks exactly as the original, but it isn't an, a genuine IC. It's a completely different IC, which has completely different functionality, rebranded or relabeled uh, as a radio IC. Really strange. And th the next batch I bought from a different seller, that one was okay again. So, and the last example for today, is a special kind of Schottky diode. Uh, in fact, Hewlett Packard or later Agilent, they manufactured special Schottky diodes um, that were tested as the best detector diodes for crystal radios. And they are also not manufactured anymore for a few years now. And so if you search on them, on eBay, the first batch I got was this. I think I bought 30 or 50 of them. And um, as you can see from the data sheet, um, the diode connection is from pin one as anode going to pin three as cathode. And here I've soldered uh, a few of, of the first batch on little adapter boards. And now let's check in diode mode 
if we get the typical point 3 volts from point from pin 1 to pin 3 and we get nothing. So let's check from pin 3 to 2 uh, and from pin 2 to 3. So with a completely different connection we get 0.6 volts. So clearly this is not a Schottky diode but it's a PN junction, a bipolar diode. So the wrong material, the wrong diode at the wrong connection. So clearly a fake and I'll show you a macro photo and the lower one is the one that we just tested. It has TOB as marking and this is the correct marking and the upper one is the second batch I bought and this does not look like TOB. It looks a bit cleaner um, so I was very suspicious if the second batch from a different eBay seller and you can see here how the eBay seller uh, is named uh, if you read it. And now let's check again from, I've soldered one here on this uh, breadboard, from pin 1 to pin 3 if we get a diode connection and we have 0.388 volts. So this looks better. It's clearly a Schottky diode and it's clearly at the wrong pins, uh, but I'm not 100% sure because of the strange marking on the plastic case if this is really a genuine, well they call it here, HMS uh, HSMS 2860TR1G diodes. So the, the designation is correct. If this really is, you can even see that this is our order here by ID Kanka Labs. But I have to check the reverse current. Uh, this must be in the sub nanoamps region to prove that this is the genuine uh, Hewlett Packard or Agilent. A diode and not a, a fake again, this time a better fake with a correctly orientated Schottky diode. But if it's really the Hewlett Packard or Agilent diode, I'm still not 100% uh, convinced. So that was it for today with, with my experience with fake chips. Beforehand, I, I thought that only power transistors are very expensive ICs uh, are faked uh, in the Chinese uh, factories, but apparently they even fake Schottky diodes and uh, fat little little small power fats and I don't know. And uh, in a separate video I will show you how to test Varector diodes because I also got a batch of these 1SV149 Varector or Varicap diode, so they, they are not so easily testable with a multimeter. And uh, because we had a large order from a renowned company in Germany with uh, I think 500 of these, I had to check if they were genuine. And that was a little bit tricky, but I will show that in a different uh, video. If this batch here is really, uh, really genuine, Varector diodes with the right specifications. So thanks for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.